Hello, so today we're going to learn to use a commercial software package uh, to perform conduction heat transfer modeling in a solid. Uh, we're using the ANSYS Multiphysics software because uh, we have an academic teaching license for it at the university. You can find it on an engineering computer under the engineering folder ANSYS 14 and the Workbench 14 program. I've already got it up and running here. Uh, it involves a lot of subsystems, so you could do electromagnetic modeling with one program. You could do structural modeling, which is finite element analysis with another program. Uh, you could do rigid body dynamics, look at how linkages move, uh, robotics, that sort of thing. And then there are two different software packages for computational fluid dynamics, uh, CFD. Now we're actually going to use that because uh, CFD solves the Navier-Stokes equations which handle the convection and diffusion of, of a, a quantity. Uh, in terms of thermal energy, uh, for a solid there's no convection, so we're looking at modeling only the diffusion of thermal energy, conduction heat transfer. So that's actually a subset of what these software packages can provide. I'm most familiar with CFX, so we'll use that. You can click and drag that analysis system over to the project schematic space. And uh, I'll give it a name here. And we'll start by creating a geometry. You can double click. That should open ANSYS Design Modeler, which is a uh, basic CAD package that comes with the ANSYS software. I'll use millimeter for my length unit. Go up to your XY plane you can click on this button to look directly at the plane. I'll go into the sketching tool here and under settings and grid I'll check mark to show a grid in 2D and a snap to the grid to help me make uh, my geometry selections. The major grid spacing is 10 millimeters and there are 10 steps so my smallest uh, squares are 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter. Uh, to move around, you can uh, click on the rotate button, pan, and the zoom buttons. The other thing you can do is use your mouse. Uh, if you uh, click the scroll wheel and then scroll in and out, it allows you to zoom. If you hold down the scroll wheel and drag your mouse, you can rotate. And if you hold down the control button while pressing down on the scroll wheel and dragging your mouse, you can pan. You have all those options available to you. Okay, I'm going to create uh, just a, a generic shape here. Uh, I'll use the spline tool to start out. And I'll zoom in and I'll make one point with a left click at 0, 0. I'll make another click at uh, 10, 20 across and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up. I'll make another uh, point at 10, 20, 30 across and 10, 15 up. And I'll make one more at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and 10, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm done there so I'll right click and choose open end with fit and control points. So that creates a nice little curve piece and I want to close that into a, a 2D structure. So I'll use my line tool and uh, I'll put a left click at my ending point. I'll move up a little bit and another left click. Then I'll go back and make a horizontal piece, left click and left click. And then one more vertical piece, left click and left click. So I've closed that into a 2D uh, structure. I can dimension it. I'll just use the general tab uh, just like a normal CAD package uh, with parametric design. I can dimension maybe that vertical piece and this horizontal piece. The basic idea is that down here in the details view now uh, I can drive my design. Maybe make the smallest height there 10 millimeters for instance. So I'm 60 across, uh, a little over 30 high, and this is 10 millimeters tall. Okay, 
Uh, even if I'm doing a 2D analysis, ANSYS CFX uh, is a 3D solver. So I still need to create a 3D solid uh, before um, I go into the, the CFX Pre software. That means I need to extrude this shape. So I'll go to my modeling tab. I'll click the extrude button. And it's looking for geometry, so I'll click sketch one and choose apply. I'll use all the default values except for the depth in which to extrude. Uh, you'll have to take my word for it right now, but uh, to do a 2D analysis, uh, we're essentially saying that nothing is happening in the Z direction into and out of the screen. Uh, and with our appropriate boundary conditions, uh, we can deal with just a very thin surface there. So if I'm 60 by 30 millimeters, maybe one millimeter extrusion depth would be a thin segment. And I'll click Generate. Okay, so as you can see, I've created a 3D uh, solid shape. Uh, one last thing to help us with identifying boundary conditions at each surface later on is to go ahead and give them named shortcuts in Design Modeler, where it's uh, easiest to create them. So to do that, I will move my selection tool to a face, and I'll left-click on this face to highlight it. You can right-click and choose Name Selection. Click Apply, so it's found that one face you selected, and I'll give it a name, maybe uh, Right, be pretty generic here. And I'll click the Generate button to create that named shortcut. I'll do the same thing over here. I'll call it left, choose generate. I'll do this for the top surface. Generate that and the bottom surface. If you want to select multiple surfaces, like perhaps for the sides, oops, let me first hit generate. There we go. You can mul select multiple surfaces by holding down the control button as you click. So for instance, I can select the front side and I can rotate to the back, hold down the control key, and click on the back side as well. Notice both are now selected. So when I go to create that name selection, notice it has the two faces, and maybe I'll call those the sides. Okay, so in Design Modeler, uh, basic CAD tool, I've created a uh, 2D shape. I've extruded it to create a 3D solid, and I've used, uh, I've created named shortcuts to help me a little bit later on in creating boundary conditions. At this point, you can close Design Modeler. And it'd probably be a good time to go ahead and uh, save your workbench uh, project. Note that geometry has a green check mark, meaning we can move on to mesh now.